One year ago, I quit my job as a software developer at Google, a place I had worked for over 12 years. A year later, I find myself having created 100 videos for this channel, the excellent Pokédex, and even making a little money from it. Did I quit my comfy tech job just to create this small Pokémon channel? No! Because that would be insane. So then, why did I leave Google? And how did it lead me to this channel, of all places? This video is my way of celebrating 100 public videos on this channel. If you stick around, I'll tell you the story of this channel, and how it grew from nothing to almost 3,000 subs over the last few months. While I didn't quit Google to become a YouTuber, I did quit to pursue a different, but equally insane, dream. Yep, I wanted to try being an indie game dev. In the year before I quit, I had been working on a mobile word game called Toggle. I'd released the game on the Apple and Google stores, but it had failed to earn many downloads on its own. The feedback on the game was good. I had put a lot of effort into honing its mechanics, and had even read the entire dictionary to curate it to the exact set of words I wanted. But just being good wasn't enough. If you know anything about mobile game development, this probably isn't a surprise. While software developers love to believe in the idea of build it and they will come, building something good gets you nothing on its own. There is little automatic exposure in mobile app stores, and many areas of mobile gaming, especially word games, are extremely saturated. I felt that Toggle would do well, if anyone actually tried it. So I decided my first project after quitting would be to try to get Toggle into more hands. Did I know anything about marketing? Absolutely not. My plan? Write some blog posts, pay for some ads, post on social media, and hope that all of this would start a word of mouth chain reaction that would cause the game to blow up and turn me into a millionaire. So did it work? Here's what happened. I wrote a couple of blog posts about interesting aspects of the game. I posted these in a few places and got basically zero attention from these posts. That didn't work. So I tried posting promotional videos and gameplay footage on TikTok and YouTube without much success. That didn't work either. So I then spent way too much money on ads. My favorite ad platform was Reddit. Despite it being a paid post, there were lots of positive comments and good feedback. That did a lot for my ego, but not enough for downloads. Technically, the most effective ad platform was ironically Google, in terms of clicks per dollar. Google Ads were the reason I was able to get more than 10,000 downloads on Android, with over 100 reviews. But these users seemed generally less engaged than those I got from Reddit, and quickly disappeared once the ads stopped running. Overall, the game was made more popular. However, I still wasn't a millionaire. After I stopped running ads for it, Toggle settled at a revenue of about $1 to $2 per day, and would generally peak around 20 to 30 active users in a 30 minute period. This would take years to pay off the amount I'd already spent on ads. The situation seemed pretty hopeless, and I was out of ideas on how to do better. I knew I had a good product, but to be fair, I had been warned that mobile word games were not a good way to make money. So I decided to move on. I had an idea for a new mobile game. It was based on a fun gameplay concept that hadn't yet been explored by many games. You can check out the video up there if you're curious about the details. But after completing a prototype, I realized something. If I didn't do something different, this game might be doomed to the same predicament facing Toggle. It was depressing to think about spending so much time completing the game, only for it to never be played. So I got interested in the idea of community building. I had seen other game developers build communities on YouTube and wondered if I could do the same. I could make videos showing my progress and generate a natural audience of people interested in the game. But there was a problem. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Jumping right into a channel about my game seemed way too difficult. I had never filmed myself, done a voiceover, set up lights, edited a video, and I had basically no experience with cameras and microphones. So I had this idea that I could start a different channel to ease myself into it. A faceless channel that wasn't too personal. Something without too much emotional investment so my terrible attempts at learning video editing wouldn't haunt me forever. And this is where the side quest that is the excellent Pokédex begins. I had been playing Pokémon Go for a while, and really enjoyed the challenge of its throwing minigame. The highest achievement in this minigame is the excellent throw. For every Pokémon in the game, getting an excellent throw is a little different. For me, it's a fun challenge to figure out how to perfect the throw for each Pokémon. I had this idea 
that I could start a channel with videos about how to get excellent throws, with each video focused on a different Pokemon. Other channels had made generic excellent throw guides, but no one had attempted specific guides for each Pokemon in the way that I imagined. Learning as I went, I created a first video about a Pokemon called Electric and posted it to my new channel, The Excellent Pokedex. It used simple in-game footage recorded on my phone along with an AI voice. The quality was about what you'd expect from a first video, but I posted it on the Sylph Road and the reception was encouraging enough to continue. I decided to continue making these videos and eventually made one for Scatterbug that ended up getting more than 5,000 views. That was a huge accomplishment for me, but for the most part, my other videos didn't get many views and I decided to take a break going into Christmas 2023. After Christmas, I felt that I'd done enough practice, and I finally felt that I could make a video about my game. Remember the indie game dev thing? Well, I edited and published a video about the game that I'd started, Merchants of the Stars. While this video has less than 100 views to date, I was happy to be making the kind of video that I originally set out to make, using my actual voice and face and covering my game projects. But now I had a new problem. YouTube was too interesting. I was honestly more interested in making videos than in continuing my work on the game. Oops. Then something happened that changed everything with this channel. Near the end of December 2023, a new mechanic was discovered in Pokemon Go, which I call Perfect Throws. The community was buzzing about this discovery, and it was right in the wheelhouse of the excellent Pokedex. It wasn't an excellent guide, but it was directly related to the throwing minigame. After spending several weeks gathering footage and editing, I released my 12 minute video, The Rise and Fall of Perfect Throws in Pokemon Go. I decided after scripting it that the AI voice didn't feel right anymore. I guess I'd gained confidence, and it finally felt easier to just talk myself than let a robot do the talking. I never looked back, and continued to use my own voice for all subsequent videos. I had no idea how the Perfect Throw video would do, but the reception was unbelievable. It was soon my most successful video by far, and as of now has over 33,000 views. Success felt great, and encouraged me to keep making videos on this channel. I realized that I could have more success by making videos on topics that interested me, rather than always making specific excellent throw guides. So I decided to make another long video about excellent throws, including motivation and technique. The new 20 minute video was editing heavy, and it took a few weeks to complete. The reception was good, but I was a little disappointed that it turned out to do a little worse than the Perfect Throws video, topping out around 15,000 views so far. Despite its fewer views, it actually did more to attract subs, and it's accounted for around 300 so far. Due to their length, these two successful videos had tons of watch time, with a total of over 3,000 watch hours between them. This brought me tantalizingly close to the monetization threshold of 1,000 subs and 4,000 watch hours. It was never my plan. But through some strange twist of fate, becoming a pro Pokemon Go YouTuber now seemed like the most natural thing to do. Coasting on my existing success and a number of smaller videos, I hit 1,000 subscribers by the beginning of April and hit 4,000 watch hours soon after. I immediately applied for monetization and was quickly accepted. High on my success, I then released what I intended as my third blockbuster video, a video about Quick Catch, another mechanic in Pokemon Go. Like before, I spent weeks scripting, recording, and editing this new 20 minute video. I was sure it would do well. The last two had, right? But at last I was brought down to earth. The new video has received fewer than 2000 views to this day, and only made about $13. This isn't bad for many of my videos, but given the large investment, it was a flop. I'd finally ridden the YouTube emotional roller coaster. So anyway, the channel was technically monetized. But to actually be paid, I needed to make at least $100. I was still a long, long way from that. But now I had a new natural goal, an actual deposit in my bank account. The failure of my latest high effort video made me a bit wary of investing weeks into a single video again. Instead, I made a number of shorter videos that each did moderately well. I also continued making some excellent throw guides, and these occasionally did okay. I kept uploading videos with no major success and a couple of very annoying flops. In particular, I made one video that I was really proud of called The Hunt for Wiglet. It had a proper storyline and real life footage, a first for me, but it absolutely bombed. In fact, it did so bad that I considered deleting and re-uploading it. 
everyone tells you not to do this, but I convinced myself that the video underperformed because YouTube never properly tested it. As some context, I had noticed that videos typically get a noticeable bump of impressions a few hours after upload. This happens to the vast majority of my videos, but for some reason, this never happened to The Hunt for Wiglet. So eventually, I did decide to re-upload it. Despite the conventional wisdom, the video did actually do better. It got its initial bump in impressions, and eventually ended up breaking 1k views. This was far better than the original upload was on track to do. After a few more months of mediocre channel performance, I was able to be in the right place at the right time to make another successful video. Pokemon Go's developer, Niantic, released a patch that broke the catch mechanics in a subtle but noticeable way. Luckily for me, catch mechanics are my specialty, and I had the specific footage required to demonstrate the change. So I made a video demonstrating the bug by comparing my archival Pokemon Go footage to the current situation, and it took off. It got almost 15,000 views, and the video has made more than $50. It also powered me past 2,000 subs, a number I hadn't expected to reach until much later. With that video, and its follow-up when the bug was fixed, I easily passed the $100 payout threshold. I was paid in late July. And with that, I guess I became a pro Pokemon Go YouTuber. It wasn't quite the career change I'd expected when leaving Google, and I definitely haven't succeeded yet in becoming an indie game dev, but I had succeeded at something unexpected and kind of wonderful. I don't have any illusions that the excellent Pokédex is my job, or could ever make enough money to be my job, but I am curious how big it could get. So far, I've made over $300 in ad revenue from the channel, with a couple of my best videos making between $50 and $100 each, and the rest making a few dollars here and there. It's not enough to live on, but it's not nothing either. There are still a lot more nerdy Pokemon Go topics to discuss, and I'll keep making videos on this channel as long as I'm having fun. I'm still learning a lot from every video, and I'm really excited to see what the next 100 videos will be. I hope you enjoyed this behind-the-scenes look at the excellent Pokédex and how it came to be. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.